Jerry being this kind of typical dad who's just there to work. I mean, that was a huge reason also for him to be so open to doing this because he was like, John, if there's still anything I can do at this phase of my life for your career, then I'm still playing the part of dad. I'm still fulfilling my mission as a father. Welcome to Bitch Talk. I'm Aaron Lim. This is Ange, a.k.a. Captain Party. And I'm producer Shar. And over the last 10 years, we've been elevating marginalized voices through interviews and events, sometimes over a glass of whiskey. Welcome to day eight of our Sundance and Slamdance film festival coverage. Today from Slamdance, we're bringing you documentaries on people with complicated lives. We have starring Jerry as himself, which won the Grand Jury Documentary Feature Film, an Audience Award Doc Feature Film winner, and an Acting Award, and Silent Love, which won the Slamdance Grand Jury Honorable Mention for Documentary Feature Film. A big thank you to 48 Hills and our listeners for voting us Best of the Bay Best Podcast. And now, on with the show. We are on the Festival Daily Buzz, broadcasting, recording, and doing all that stuff from the Treasure Mountain Inn at Slamdance. Uh, with me is Angela Tabora and Aaron Lim from Bitch Talk. My name is John Wildman. I'm the editor-in-chief of FilmsGoneWild.com. And on this segment, we're going to talk about the Slamdance film starring Jerry as himself. We've got with us Jerry. Uh, who's in the film, all about the film. The film is all about him. We have his son, Jonathan, who's also in the film, one of the producers of it. And Lawrence Chen, who's director, co-screenwriter, editor, producer, DP. I think he did craft services too. Um, <laughs> he did it all. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. I did a little bit of um, coffee getting for various people. <laughs> yes. during the yeah, so yeah. All right. All, but I'm so happy that we're here. Well, let's start off by uh, having you, uh, well, I'll have you introduce our audience to the film. They haven't seen it as yet. So tell us about the film. Yeah, absolutely. So do- so starring Jerry as himself is a docu-fiction feature about a man named Jerry, who is an ordinary immigrant dad, retired in Florida, who gets a call from the Chinese police and recruits him to be an undercover secret agent. Isn't that right, Jerry? Yes. and scene well i I i'd say i i also i come from a tight-knit close family and i was just fully invested in this film from start to finish i i was invested in the story and i was left with all the emotions at the end so first of all thank you for sharing the story but i wanted to know as a family was there ever a point when you were like oh i'm nervous sharing us as a family with the public and how they're going to perceive us. Was there ever a point when you told law like, oh, you know, maybe let's cut back on something or, or were you just fully trusting in the process? Um, Yeah, it was a, it was a huge development process where we obviously um, as a documentary, you want to be very sensitive to the subject. And then this being the most, probably the most personal film I'll ever make in my life. Um, It was uh, it was just checking in with Jerry, checking in with the family, making sure that they are understanding how we're telling the story and why we're telling the story. I think the why is the most important. Mm -hmm. Uh, No spoilers, but, Mm -hmm. you know, there's there's uh, a very big reason of of why we wanted to make this film. And there was a time sensitive crunch, too, as far as like how quickly we had to make this, because. uh, um, There was a possibility of extradition uh, for Mm -hmm. Jerry to go. Um, to be taken out of the States. And so, yeah, I think we all just banded together and supported each other in making this film. I wanted to start with Jerry. Um, During this process, and I feel we can go maybe around the room, And but what did you learn about your family through this filming process that you didn't know before? I know my family pretty well, actually. Uh, we do the film together, and uh, just like we do uh, John's high school project. Mm. And uh, he shoot a lot of film before we always help. And uh, now I learned my family, they are more artistic. You know, they, mm. they, can mm-hmm. all, they all can play. Uh, <laughs> and uh, naturally, so uh, I feel happy with this family. And uh, all my kids grow up with me, and uh, mm-hmm. 
all my teachings they learned and uh, I feel happy with my family. Mm. Yes. Law, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, th this film, it's um, it's a hybrid. Um, there's, you know, documentary elements to it. There's narrative elements to it. Uh, you're using pretty much all the things in the toolbox in a storytelling manner. Um, but as and, I, and we went through that list of all the roles you were you know, playing to, to, to do this. Um, talk about just the building, the architecture of the film and, the, and that challenge and how, how you took that on. There's a whole story behind why we chose to do what we did. And it is a docu-fiction feature because of Jerry. And, you know, when, this, when we first got this phone call, I first got this phone call from Jonathan. He was like, something terrible has happened. My dad is a undercover agent for the Chinese police. And, we were, and he was like, can you help me find out exactly what happened? Like, what happened? So we go down to Florida and we're interviewing Jerry to be like, Jerry, what happened? And he's telling us about like, you know, an international money laundering investigation and like doing secret surveillance at a local bank and like wearing a wiretap for bank tellers. And the story just got more and more fantastical. And I realized that if you were going to make this doc, everything has already happened. How do you go and tell this story? And the only way we would do that is like a recreation or some sort of like scripted narrative version. And then if we do that, who can play Jerry? There's maybe like two guys in Hollywood that are like 70 year old Asian guys that can play an Asian dad. And are they're gonna pick up my phone call tomorrow, I'm not sure. And Jerry is getting more and more interested in mm -hmm. our process. And he's like, what's going on? What are you guys doing? What are you making? So we've always wanted to make interesting filmmaking decisions. So we were like, Jerry, would you like to play yourself? And Jerry said, yes, only if it's a spy film. <laughs> because I felt like Jason Bourne, I felt like James Bond, and I want the audience to feel the same way. So we just decided, yeah, let's go make a doc that kind of feels like a spy film, but ultimately is about an immigrant searching for the American dream. I love that, especially because, like I said before, I was left feeling all the feelings, and, and that's why, because for all these reasons, it's a really complicated story, but essentially it, it isn't, you know? And I think that goes back to you, Jerry. I think you are the king of perspective. I love your outlook on life, um, the way you see things. Um, I, I would love to hear why you think you can look at life with with such a beautiful lens. It, it, does it have to do with your immigration story? Um, can you speak to that? Because uh, I do the film with my family. That's why I feel comfortable and uh, life's beautiful. Family work together and uh, people, are, uh, kids are growing up. So they left me and now they will come back together. We, we kind of reunion again. So that's why I, I feel happy and uh, I enjoy to do the work together. Mm. And, uh, and uh, Lawrence is a good friend. Or family, so we work together just like a real family. And, and uh, he 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 shot me too. Always a while, I said, okay. So he's a director, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, in, in in all general, happy. It's a happy process. I I feel like Jerry had a lot of fun doing this whole thing. Fun, yes. Um, for me, like, and obviously it's about yeah somebody else's family, <laughs> right? I'm I'm here as an outsider, mm -hmm. a friend, but an outsider, like looking into this family and, and looking into what is a very personal thing for an Asian American family to reveal mm -hmm. about themselves. Um, you know, having their dad be part of a, you know, international money laundering investigation. Um, so the reason I did it was because Jerry reminded me of my dad and reminded me of my parents. And I remember on set once I was like frustrated and I was just like, we need to move to the next shot. And I just, I, I was like, dad, get over here, we need to, and I was like, oh my God, I just called him dad. <laughs> <laughs> John and his brothers were like, wait, that's <laughs> my dad. <laughs> that's my dad. I was like, right. <laughs> that's right. So it, it, it felt like I was part of this family as we were doing this. Um, and and I learned about that family, a lot about that family too, so. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the family because uh, I mean, Jonathan, you're a producer on it. Um, Jerry, you're actually, uh, um, you know, got a, a co-script writing uh, credit on this. The, the, the whole family's involved, mm -hmm. but did everybody honestly embrace being part of this project? Mm -hmm. Because in the film, the dynamic, you all have such distinctive different personalities mm -hmm. and outlooks. So Jonathan, can you talk about that? You're talking about caviar. Yeah, I love uh, that. Uh, yes. <laughs> 
I think I know where you're heading with this, John. Um, and the answer is no, not everyone was on board mm. in the beginning. It took a bit of massaging. Uh, it took a bit of um, convincing. I mean, but in the end, it was like Jerry said, it was about a family story. So, And also, they are very familiar, my whole family, with me pointing a camera at them. But now it's just law pointing a camera at them. And I'm I'm there too, just right next to law. And I think um, the process was a lot. There was a lot of give and take um, in this being uh, a film involving real people. And, you know, it's typical documentary style. We were working around everyone's schedules. There were certain things that were like off the table as far as mm -hmm. things to talk about. And mm -hmm. we made sure to to dance around those things in the film but to still accentuate sort of a caricature like version of them for the film. And also to let them know that in the process of making this, because like Law said, this is a hybrid. So at one part they're playing themselves and then at what part they're playing a recreation of themselves, like a, mm -hmm. um, of the event um, to best get the audience into their sort of like experience of what happened during this film. To answer your original question a little more, like I was very nervous asking mm -hmm. every other family member to be like be a part of this story because obviously it's a it's a big story and and Jerry's whole thing was like I need this story to be told I want this story to be told and then I was very nervous when we we were going to go to Kathy because she was like I don't know do I want to be a part of this blah, blah, blah. <laughs> as soon as the camera started rolling. <laughs> she was like, well, let me tell you about everything. And it just came like pouring out. And then she became kind of the narrative, like the narrator yeah. of this whole thing. Because she's got such an interesting perspective and voice and yeah. we love and, her for and it. And this is also like, it was a bit of family therapy for all of us to just like, you know, once you have the camera in front of you, like you're a little bit different. You're, you know, like, oh, I don't know who's going to be on the other end watching this in the end. But... Yeah. Um, you kind of turn on or you turn off a little bit and, you know, law how to direct them in that sort of way. But yeah, I think it was very much like um, a bit of therapy for us to just mm -hmm. say, you know, don't worry, we'll edit around it, right? Like just free association, psychotherapy, just say everything that's on your mind, everything that you're dealing with. And then um, when we were like, then we deal we with were it later. developing yeah. some of the ideas through it, it was like, John, how did you not know mm. that your dad was a secret agent other than the fact he was a good secret agent? How did you not know whose fault is it? Well, and, here's and, the thing, yeah. like like many Asian dads or just dads, they keep that work private. Like mm -hmm. that is their mission is to support the family, you know, eat salt and just like <laughs> do and just like just work hard and and you know what that's like a lot of i think a lot of people would identify that with that like Correct. like that's like um they're the that's, perfect secret agent. right they are agents like in their own mission they are there to support the family or do whatever and i'm like you know now thinking about it in my childhood yeah i don't really know like the other part of my dad like um you know i would ask what are his dreams his aspirations stuff but he was too tired. He was working hard to support mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. you know, like three kids, getting them through school and all that stuff. So Jerry being this uh, kind of typical dad who's just there to work. I mean, that was a huge reason also for him to be so open to doing this because he was like, John, I if there's still anything I can do at this phase of my life for your career, then I'm still playing the part of dad. I'm still giving to you. I'm still fulfilling my mission as a father. Well, it's yeah. it's a fascinating uh, ride uh, to take part in as, as a viewer. Um, it's a really stylistically done and, um, and it definitely has its share of surprises. Uh, again, the title of the film is starring Jerry as himself, screening at Slamdance. We've been talking with Jerry Shu and Jonathan Shu and the director, Lawrence Chen. It's been great having you guys on the show. Thank you guys so Thank much for having so us. Much. We're so Thank excited. You. Thank you. Thank you. This episode is made possible by Anne Wang, Natalie Gamble, the Papa Lowdown Agency, the Friesen Family, Jenny Yang, 
Fleetwood, aka Nico, Melanie Pena, Lauren Lim, Catherine Tulio, Courtney Quita, Myla Blog, Anita Tabora Rodriguez, Arabella DeLuco, Chloe Jackman of Chloe Jackman Studios, Shauna Festi, Stephanie Walton, Lisa Shad, Antoinette Tabora, and Storied San Francisco. Thank you so much for donating, and a special shout out to the Slam Dance Film Festival for providing us a recording home in Park City. Okay, the Festival Daily Buzz recording at the Treasure Mountain Inn up on Main Street in Park City. It's Sundance Slam Dance. We are Slam Dance right now for this film, which is Silent Love. And we've got the director, Marek Kozakevich. Um, Marek, welcome to the show. Uh, nice to meet you. Hello. Okay, uh, Marek, we always start our uh, segments by having our filmmaker introduce our audience to the film. So tell us about Silent Love. So Silent Love is a, is a film about uh, building a new unconventional family in a conservative uh, surrounding of a, of a small conservative Polish village. And it's, um, uh, it starts with uh, dealing with death as the siblings Agnieszka, who's 35, and her brother, 14, has to deal with the loss of their mother. Um, and Agnieszka tr tries to become a legal guardianship uh, for, for his brother Mil Milos. And and then uh, throughout the story, um, it occurs that Agnieszka is in a in a long term secret love relationship with Maya, and uh, Maya enters the to the family, and the three of them try to somehow build a a new family. Yeah, I I just have to tell you, I thought the film was so beautifully beautifully shot. Um, it was hard for me to believe that it was a documentary, mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if you can talk about the art of sort of anticipating these beautiful shots as though they were planned as a real scene is unfolding. Yeah, thank you for that. It's 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 100% documentary and it's a classical observative uh, documentary. Uh, I'm a, I'm a DOP uh, by mm -hmm. trade and I, I finished National Film School uh, in Łódź and uh, so uh, so it was a bit easier for me and I worked as a, both the director and the cinematographer mm -hmm. and the sound guy in the film so mm -hmm. So I had a good camera, I had good uh, Tice Prime lenses, and I and I spent loads of time there. It's the, the shooting lasts three and a half years, and wow. in the film it's condensed into one year. But I would uh, I would just uh, stay several months in a year with them, living with them in the same flat. It's uh, uh, and I was there right from the beginning when the when the new family started to arise. So they in a way they adopted me, and I mm. became a part of it, <laughs> and. Uh, and I was just, and, and it's my directional debut. So I, I, it was, I was just actually being there, waiting and, uh, and, and shooting and also helping them and also supporting them as much as I could. And how did you come to find this um, unconventional family? My mother comes from a nearby village. Okay. So she knew the mother of Agnieszka and, and Milos. They were friends. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so, so in a way, I, I started the project documenting the life of Agnieszka and Milos, the, the siblings, and, and uh, without knowing anything about Maya. Mm -hmm. So okay. it, well, for me also, it was a journey and, 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 and it changed. And, and, and so, so Agnieszka, at some point, she trusted me uh, and, and told me about her um, uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And then it's uh, and then it's all started from a new angle, uh, and 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 we we had to we talked about it a lot. Uh, but I, I mean, if I told her right from the beginning that that I want to make a film about it, she wouldn't agree for that. That's mm -hmm. for sure. But I was there. I, I I was there. I was shooting what was happening, and it was just organically happening that Maya joined them, and <laughs> and it was at some point obvious that the film cannot be about something else. It had to be all that. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I very much appreciated about the film uh, are the quiet moments they're in. You know, when when we see uh, this type of story uh, dramatized, um, there are high emotions. There are, you know, um, big dramatic moments. And in real life, it's not like that. In real life, you have... Uh, testimonials in front of uh, you know uh, boards that are accounts, and you and you have moments, uh, quiet moments with your family that you're trying to figure out. Um, it's the first time, uh, your first time director, and and so to embrace that 
and and to allow that without panicking and going, is the audience going to follow? Are they going to care? Um, that doesn't always happen. Um, talk about that as you're going through the filming process and then through the editing process. Uh, you know, how comfortable were you to it's think this is my film? Funny you're saying that because this was, it was a feeling that I, I was a bit scared at some moments that it might be uh, in a way not enough. But I think, I mean, uh, constructing a new family from scratch, it is, dif uh, even if you write a script, uh, a future script, I, it would be difficult to write uh, in what moments the family actually uh, built in a way. And those are really delicate, subtle moments, the way they look at each other, the, it's, 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 uh, it's very delicate and subtle and the fact that I was there uh, so much time I was really able to to catch all the nuances and and all the warmth of it because it's not only a drama it's I mean the drama is there and the tension is there but uh, but there's a lot of love a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, warmth in it and that was uh, very important for me so so I, I in a way I knew which psychological states I wanted to go through with each character in a way and I tried to catch it to, just to know that I have it in the material and I and I didn't have a script in my head while shooting so I didn't know where, how exactly I would edit it uh, and we tried different stuff in editing we ended up with actually editing it in quite linear how it was happening not trying to change too much mm -hmm. as it it seemed it was the the strongest uh, dramaturgy and what was really important for me is in editing and that's why the editing lasted one and a half year uh, which was a uh, mm -hmm. uh, hell <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> but i really wanted it to have this although it was totally sh shot in and uh, i mean nothing was staged nothing was played it was all observational i really wanted it to have this uh, future future way of uh, dramaturgy of narration to really um, have this flow of a, of a future film and and we spent a lot of time in editing uh, trying to really build it so that although it's so subtle and delicate uh, uh, that of course it, it remains deep and and but uh, but at the same time it has the 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 pace uh, yeah that, that goes uh, that that keeps us going forward, forward, mm -hmm. and, and keeps us really attached to the film and wanting to know what happens next. I'm glad you brought up uh, those intimate moments because you're showing from this film that love takes different faces. It doesn't need to, just because it's not in your face doesn't mean it's any less passionate or intimate or special. Um, and I'm curious about that um, during the process. Has filming this documentary helped them sort of be more comfortable or, or are they more open about it now? Um, or is there talks about when this film comes out in Poland? You know, what are people going to say? Like, what has what the process been for them? It already did. We already yeah. had big uh, premieres in Poland and, and several festivals and, mm -hmm. and uh, also successes. In, 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 uh, so we won the best Polish documentary of uh, 22. Uh, Congratulations. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Really, so it was a really long process that we went through throughout the five years of making the film. Uh, and they, it was a process for them to emancipate and also to do start doing their first coming outs to the families. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, so, uh, and, and we were in a way also the, the, the amount of time. Uh, one thing was that I needed it to finish the film. And, uh, <laughs> but another thing is uh, they needed it to be ready to talk about their relationship. Mm. And, uh, so, but before the Polish premiere, they really, they were really ready for it, and they they wanted it. They were waiting for it, and they gave uh, several interviews to 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 big uh, media, newspaper, and 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 they were really honest about their relationship, their family, and uh, so, so, uh, of course, before that, we we showed the film to their families. Um, I always told them that if there's anything you want to erase from the story or any scene, any any shot, uh, I'll just throw it out. So the moment I showed them the uh, the, the final edit was really stressful in a way, but <laughs> it was beautiful that they really uh, it, it was uh, they really liked it and they liked the warmth of it and that it's mm -hmm. not only a drama that it has this uh, humor in it as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they didn't want to erase any anything out of it. So the moment the uh, Polish premiere was the moment when I saw them for the first time in a, in the public uh, on the street holding their hands together. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it's it was really. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 
Uh, I love no, it's so special. Uh, and, and We're just gonna cry all day. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, carry on. Yeah, it was it was beautiful and it was so t- moving to to all of us and we were really scared how uh, also how the, the village w- will react mm-hmm. on it. Right. So mm-hmm. we know that some people in the village. So I, I wanted to show it in the village together and mm. to to do a talk about it, but they didn't want it. They, they were afraid of it, so so we didn't show it in the village. Who didn't want it? It, it, my protagonist, Agnieszka mm, and Maya. Couple, uh, yeah, not, yeah. The, not the town. I no, no, no. The, okay. the, the town seems to be rather open in a way. I mean, they are not uh, aggressive towards them. They don't confront them with that, with, the, with, with, with the, their relationship. But at the same time, Agnieszka and Maya, they still uh, do not show any affection to each other mm. in the village. They don't talk about their relationship. So they still... So the status quo is still there, but uh, in a way they still have to keep it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably the next step would be to somehow open it for the, for the, uh, for, for, for the, to to be, to, to be able to, to live uh, how they want. In a way, both sides want to keep it the same way. Mm -hmm. And although we all know that all the villagers know that they are a couple, they don't talk about it, they Mm -hmm. confront them about it, and everything is okay. And we don't know how it would be if it would change. Mm -hmm. So so nobody wants to change it. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think the best compliment I can give you is that I think you did right by them. Um, and 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 the the formation of this family and and the um, the opening of that relationship, um, I, I I think you did a justice to them with the film. Uh, again, Silent Love is the title of the film. It's screening at Slam Dance. We've been talking to the director Mara Kozakovic. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on today's show. You can find more information about this episode in our show notes. If you're missing us, you can visit us at bitchtalkpodcast.com to sign up for our newsletter and buy us a cup of coffee. Did you know we're also on the radio? You can find us at bff.fm. And lastly, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Only the coolest bitches are doing it. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.